everyone, this is Miss Tebow, and I'm here to introduce our first read aloud lesson where we're going to be focusing on what deserts are like. So in this lesson and our second lesson too, I'm going to be using Ed Puzzle to insert questions into the into the read aloud lessons. So if you ever feel like you don't know the answer to one of the questions um, or the wording of a question confuses you, anything like that, you can always feel free to skip the question. I will not be upset or anything like that. I want you to be as comfortable as possible. So if you have not yet created an Edpuzzle um, account, I'd like for you to sit with a parent or guardian and create an account. I have some of the instructions listed below in this read aloud lesson. Um, and without further ado, I'd like to ask you a question to start out the lesson. So, what do you know about deserts? So, if anyone has ever wanted to visit a desert before, I have a surprise for you. I have found a virtual field trip that we will all be participating in to Australia. We're going to be visiting a desert state park called the Uru Kata State Park. Um, I'm going to post a video of me screencasting the field trip and I'll be going through all the different areas in it. So if you just wanna watch that, that's okay. But if you wanna click on the link yourself and go through the um, Uru Kata State Park website and the virtual tour, feel free to do that as well and explore on your own time, all right? Okay. All right, now for our read aloud book, Deserts by Gail Gibbons. Here's the cover. Okay. Dry ground, bright sunshine. It is hot and the sky is clear. It is daytime on the desert. A desert is a place that is very dry. In most deserts, it rains less than 10 inches a year. Scientists believe most deserts are up to a few thousand years old. Some are much older. Where they formed, the climate slowly changed from being cool and wet to warm and dry. Deserts cover one fifth of Earth's land surface. Most dry, hot deserts are near the equator. Winds bring dry and cloudless days. When the sun is high in the sky, the temperature can be well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. When the sun sets, the temperature drops sharply. It gets cooler. There is no cloud cover to hold the heat. So, does anybody know what the equator is? All right, well, the equator is an imaginary line around the middle of the world. So, this is the line of the equator right here. You can see it. And then we have a map of different countries and different continents. And they all have deserts. So... Deserts can be sandy or rocky. About one-fifth of all deserts are sandy. Over many years, wind and other elements wore away and broke down rocks into tiny grains of sand. Sandy deserts can look different. Some sandy desert floors look like rippled water. Wind blows the sand, changing its appearance. Others look uneven and lumpy. If something is in the sand's way, sand piles up behind it. On some sandy deserts, strong winds blow the sand into smooth hills called dunes. Over time, dunes can move. So that's an example of a dune there in this picture. And then up here you have sandy deserts and rocky deserts. Rocky deserts can look different and very strange. Often, wind-blown sand wears rock into odd shapes. Many deserts have jagged rocks. Sudden rains, along with heat and cold, crack the rocks and pieces break away. 
Often, the rain falls hard and fast. It runs off and sinks into the ground or evaporates. Water evaporates into the air. And we have columns, mesa, arch, and butte. Few plants and animals can live in the desert because it is so dry and hot. The ones that do live there have adapted to living without much water. Many plants that live in the desert are called succulents. They take rainwater up through their roots to store in their leaves or stems for use during dry, hot spells. So cacti, the cactus, they are considered to be succulents. So you have the saguaro cactus, organ pipe cactus, there is a century plant, and a barrel cactus. Lizards and snakes move along the desert floor. The gecko lizard flicks its sticky tongue to catch insects. The fringe toad lizard can dig itself into the sand for protection within seconds to escape enemies. The horned lizard is covered with sharp points for protection. The gila monster is a huge poisonous lizard. And these are the different pictures of the different lizards. Some desert snakes are dangerous. They hunt mice, lizards, birds, and other small animals. Some bite with a poisonous venom and swallow their prey. A sidewinder rattlesnake slithers sideways across the sand. Its body leaves wavy marks behind. The inland typhon is the most poisonous snake in the world. And I'm going to ask this question. What family do you think lizards and snakes belong to? So, lizards and snakes are reptiles. A reptile is a cold-blooded animal that crawls or moves on its belly or on its short legs. Desert skunks eat almost anything. Many desert deserts are home for badgers, ground squirrels, bobcats, and many other animals. Most of them are small. There isn't enough food and water in the desert for large animals to survive. There's the different pictures, the badgers, the ground squirrels, the desert scum, the bobcats. Some people live in deserts. Often they live in groups called tribes. Some tribes are nomadic. This means they move from one place to another, often carrying and trading goods. They may travel from oasis to oasis. Now, Sin, can anybody tell me what an oasis is? So, an oasis is a place in the desert where there are trees, plants, and water. And you can see the different people on Camelback in that picture looking and heading toward the oasis. Many natural resources have been found under desert floors. Oil, natural gas, nickel, and sodium nitrate have been found under the Arabian, Sahara, American, and Australian deserts. Gold and diamonds have also been found under deserts. Sodium nitrate is a fertilizer and, well, it's used in fertilizer, and fertilizer is what helps our plants and our crops grow quick. Deserts have some of the most interesting landscapes in the world. These hot, rocky, and sandy places are home to many plants and animals. Deserts are alive with mystery and beauty. And that is the end of the read aloud. Hi everybody, so now we're gonna move on to our activity. So if you have a printed out worksheet um, with the sorting activity on it, now would be the time to take that out. However, I know that not everybody always has access to a printer, so I have two different options for the people 
who do not have access to a printer uh, so they will still be able to participate in this activity. So in this activity, we're going to be sorting different characteristics that describe habitats into two different piles. These piles will be titled desert characteristics and non-desert characteristics. So desert characteristics would be referring to some of what we've talked about in our read aloud book and also some of what we saw in our virtual field trip. Non-desert characteristics would kind of be the opposite of what we've been learning about through our read aloud lesson as well as what we saw in the virtual field trip. So one of the options that I have if you do not have access to a printer is to go on our lessons padlet and take a look at the um, habitat characteristics that I have listed, listed there. They're the same ones that are on the sorting worksheet that I did want everyone to print out. It's fine. Um, you can write them on a blank piece of paper and all I'm asking is that you cut them out and you sort them into the two different piles like how um, those who do have access to a printer would be able to as well. Um, my second option that I have for you all is to do a virtual sorting activity. So this is the same thing. You would just be taking um, different characteristics and putting them into different piles. Um, you know, the, the non-desert and the desert characteristic piles. So all I'm asking for those who participate in that activity is that you um, complete that sorting activity three times. So I'm asking that, um, you know, you record the, your, your score the first time you do the, um, the sorting activity, and then you record your score the third time you do the sorting activity to see if, they're, um, if you were able to beat your original score. So whatever option you decide to choose, um, feel free to choose from any one of them. Um, they're there for you for a reason. Whatever one makes you feel the happiest, whatever one works for you and your family the best. There you go. All right, now that we've completed our sorting activity, it's time to move on to the closing activity. So I'd like to ask you this question. How many characteristics did you end up with in your desert pile? Okay. So these are the characteristics I have in my desert pile. I have Sandy. So like how we learned in our um, read aloud book, the a lot of different rocks will get blown into smaller pieces because of the harsh winds, and then they become grain-like and sandy. Goes along with rocky, there's plenty of rocks in the desert as well. There's the sandy, um, the sandy types of deserts and then the rocky types of deserts, they go hand in hand. And then I have dry. So we learned about the different cacti and succulents that um, live in the desert and about how they have adapted to very dry, very hot weather. So hot is going to be our last, um, our last characteristic in the pile. Um, deserts tend to run very hot. Um, in the book, it said that they can be well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And so there are one, two, three, four characteristics in the desert pile. So finally, I have one last question before I end this lesson. Um, and I would like you to um, put the answer on Padlet in the designated area that I have in this lesson's Padlet. Um, do you think it would be comfortable for a human being to live in a desert? And you can say why, you could say why not. Um, and thank you very much.